My presentation this morning is in the form of a testimony, but a little bit more. Um, I was asked to share about prayer, which is kind of a little bit ironic because I don't see myself as a great prayer. Um, I'm Colin Studley, who spoke a few weeks ago, talked about conversational prayers. That's me. I'm not really great at sort of spending big chunks of time praying. That's not my gig. Um, and I possibly should get a lot better at it, but that's where I'm at in my journey. So I'm going to share a little bit of my life experience and I hope it resonates with you. And I hope that you can see, you know, some things that you identify with, um, some ways that God speaks to you. So sometimes we all feel like we're just hanging in there, don't we? <laughs> you know, that picture, I sort of go, oh, there are days where it just all feels a little bit much and it feels like it's just going to fall apart. And um, that's my experience a fair bit of the time sometimes. Um, but I want us to think about that. Think about the days that you hang in there. One of, the thing, one of the verses that helps me keep hanging in there, and I'm going to come back to this a few times when I speak today, is Philippians 4, verse 13. And it says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Some versions say, I can do all things. That kind of freaks me out a little bit. This version says, I can do all this. So this that's in front of me today... I can do, but I can't do all things, but I can do this. And so that's what I want us to think about today. We're looking at rocky places today. Claire started us off looking at the desert. Jaden went into the unknown, and Adam last week went into the fork in the road. And I'm at the rocky places, those bits that are bumpy and hard. And so we're going to have a look at how we maybe face some of those challenges. The University Hospitals talks about five most top, uh, the top five most stressful life events. And they include the death of a loved one, divorce, that's not me, so it's all right, but moving, major illness or injury, and job loss or insecurity. I would guess for most of us here, we can go tick, tick, tick on at least three or four of them, if not all five. They're stressful events. So I'm going to share some of my stressful events and we'll see how we go. So this is my journey on the rocky road. As you can see, I'm a very visual person, so you'll get lots of pickies today. <laughs> so I thought I'd challenge myself and I'd do a timeline of my life. And you can, over on the far same way, left, <laughs> um, you'll see that I was born um, and the year is just hiding there. You might be able to read it, but if you can't, that's okay. Um, but I've divided it into decades and each of those little dots represents some significant life event. Some things I've combined, I've gone family crises because at one point um, in the early 1980s, um, we had a lot. We had a lot of things happen in a couple of years, and it was tough. All of those represent significant events. That's not even the day-to-day -day stuff, like my kid's sick, or they're having a meltdown, or they're at hospital, or they're, you know, that's not the day-to-day -day stuff. This is the big stuff. I just want to focus on the stuff that sort of happened in the last two years or so, from about the end of 2020 to 22. So at the end of 2020, I made the big life change of retiring. And that was awesome. Best thing I've ever done, by the way. Um, <laughs> really good. And I've, after educate, working in education for 40 years. So for me, it was a really big, big change. But it was a good decision. Towards the end of 2020, I'd been having trouble um, with my leg walking. And I thought, OK, because I'd had it di diagnosed as sciatica. I'd also uh, I had lymphedema because I had cancer some years before. 
and this was just a side effect of that. And so I thought, OK, I'm getting old. <laughs> um, I'm going to buy a single-storey house, because our house was multi-storey, and the stairs were just getting to me. So Daph and I decided that we would sell our house, and we got it all ready, um, you know, cleaned everything out, and some of the wonderful people here today actually helped us do some of that. Um, but we got it presented ready for the market, and we managed to sell it very quickly in January 2021. We then rented a place because we decided we were going to buy some land and build, which was awesome. We planned to rent on the 3rd of March, because that's when we had to be out of our house. We found out five days before that we'd been successful with a rental, which was, thank goodness for that, because I had the furniture truck booked on the Friday. So that was the Wednesday. Friday, furniture truck had been booked for some weeks. Friday, we're all ready to go. Uh, no trucks coming. Really bad. So we went, what the heck are we going to do? And I said, no, no, we can send a couple of trucks tomorrow. Um, and I said, can they move the piano? Because this was, you know, for any of you that own a piano, pianos are very difficult things to move. And um, they said, yeah, sure, sure. Ring again. We've only got two small trucks tomorrow. And this was the next day. I'm going, OK, can they take the piano? Oh, yeah, yeah. Can they take the piano? <laughs> uh, just let me check on that. No, they couldn't. And, worse still, they then ran back and cancelled. So, I went, OK, we've got to be out of here Monday. And um, fortunately, I did a run round. I was ringing different people going, hmm, you've got a bit of time Monday <laughs> or the, you know, to come and help. We, I was envisioning going to Andy's auto rent and renting a vehicle and just you know, doing loads and loads of trips. Anyway, we got there. Um, a couple of neighbours up the road used to work for a removalist. They had the guys there Sunday morning. We've got the rest of it out Monday. The settlement closed 3pm Monday and we were still cleaning walls, painting over, <laughs> getting it done, but we got out. So that was pretty stressful, pretty stressful. Um, and in amongst that, I think the support worker that looked after DAF, she had managed to smash a windscreen or something as well and had to get that... Oh, oh. Anyway, that was it. It was, it was like one of those things. It was tough. It was really tough. Moving itself is tough. To have removalists cancel twice, have to try and find someone else who can remove on a Sunday, on a Sunday, is horrendous. But God looked after us. We then bought a block of land, um, which we signed off on in April that year, which was great. And we managed to get into our new house. But there were things that were just getting harder. And for me, physically, there were things that were getting harder. I went off, had some x-rays. They just said, arthritis. I went, sweet. And we kept going, and I kept using a walking stick more and more. We managed to break ground later in that year which was awesome, and given the building market at the time, we were so blessed. And can I just say to you, we were blessed. Um, a lot of people that were doing process at that time are still doing the process now. Uh, but we managed to break ground. It was an exciting time and I loved it, although somewhat stressful, because I don't know whether you've ever built a house, but there's a list like this. And, and it takes time, but it was good. However, I had an unusual birthday present. This is my 60th birthday, and the doctors rang me and said, you've got to come in and have a biopsy. And um, they did a scan, and you can see in the yellow bit there um, that there's a tumour, and it's around about five by seven centimetres. And that was why I was walking with a walking stick. And the cancer that I'd had about eight years before had come back. Um, and you can see even the bone there, it's eaten away the bone. So that was great. So I had my birthday, biopsy the next day, and my celebration the following day. It's a crazy time. 
Um, but it was good, you know, because I got to celebrate and people got to look after me and attend to things. But when I went and saw the doctor after they'd done the biopsy, he said, look, it's uterine cancer, it's come back again. He said, chemo only has a 50% success rate with this type of cancer. You know, you do the odds. <laughs> it's not good, hey. Um, but he said, we can do chemo, but we can't operate. So I went, OK, let's do chemo. So that's what we did. Um, and I kind of make some of this sound easy. It wasn't. Chemo itself wasn't great. Chemo during COVID periods wasn't great um, because I was restricted as to who I could have with me or that. Fortunately, at this point, I could have at least one person with me. And so my sisters came on a few visits and then they changed the rules again. If you weren't vaccinated, you couldn't come. My sisters weren't vaccinated. So then some of the wonderful people here at church stepped in and came with me at different times. While chemo was hard, it's not the hardest thing I've done, but it was pretty crappy. Um, and I remember one Sunday after I'd had the first lot of chemo just sitting there outside and I'm going, what the heck? I felt really weird, like really weird. And I was sad, I was frustrated. And I'm going, God, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? This is just really weird. And I'm going, how do I know? How do I know how to pray? Because, you know, when a doctor tells you you've only got 50% chance of the treatment working, how do you pray? Because I'm going, God, if you want me home with you, that's okay. But I'm also going, but I've got family that I need to take care of here. And that's not okay, and I'm really worried. I'm really, really worried. Because what happens? What happens to my kids? What happens? That was really hard. And I can remember some days sitting there, and I'm going, I don't even know how to pray. I don't know whether to pray for healing. I don't know whether to pray that God takes me quickly, but make sure that everything else is in order. I don't know how to pray. But some people did, and they prayed, and some of them are sitting in this room. And I'm so grateful for those prayers, because they upheld me when I couldn't pray for me. I put the food in there because it was a blessing. <laughs> they gave us food every time I had chemo. They didn't just give me food, they gave the person who came with me food. And you know how good that makes you feel? When someone who's caring for you can be cared for a little bit as well. And it was great. Because I tell you, I had allergic reactions to the chemo. So a lot of the time, whilst I'm sitting there smiling in that photo, I wasn't. I was out to it because they'd pumped me full of Finergan to fight the allergic reaction that I had to the chemo that was supposed to be making me better. Crazy time. All during this time, so chemo lasted for a period of about 18 weeks. I had one session a week for three week, every three weeks for six sessions, so 18 weeks of chemo. And typically, and if you know about chemo, first week you feel really terrible. I was a lot better than some people. I fortunately had no nausea and I had none of that stuff, which was a, such a blessing. Second week, your immune system is incredibly low. I had to have injections. The thing that I hated most was an injection to help my body build stuff so that I didn't have, didn't, you know, so that my body could cope with infections or could cope with uh, other things that come your way because uh, your immune system basically drops right out in that second week. Third week, you start to feel good again. So every third week, I possibly got to church because I actually felt not too bad. And then you go through it all again. So in amongst this cycle, we're still building a house. And um, again, fortunately, people said, hey, we'll step up and we'll help out. As it turned out, I didn't need it. God blessed us and somehow I was able to get through this and we've still built a house. So, 
2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. I talked about Philippians 4, verse 3, but 12, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 is one of my life verses. I've had it in my life since, I don't know, I was very young because it really spoke to me. Because it says, He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest in me. It's not my strength, it's his. And even at my lowest points, it's his strength that enabled us to get through. But there were more challenges ahead. We had another move. Who would think? You'd think we'd be done, wouldn't you? Moving from, in, from our rental nicely into our new build. No, no, it didn't work that way. We had to find a little cabin for six weeks. We were due to move out of the rental the day of my last chemo. We found this little cabin and were able to move in a few days before. The day before my chemo, I was back at our rental still finishing off. We had a person come and clean, but I still needed to finish off some stuff with them had my chemo, we moved into this little two-bed cabin. It was Daph and I and the dog. You know, when we talked about Labradors before, well, Labradors are not little dogs, so there were the three of us in the cabin, plus Daph's support workers who came most days of the week and were coming a lot because I wasn't well and a lot of them were sleeping over, so it was cosy. It was very <laughs> cosy. Um, the Monday after my last little chemo, I had an infection and I ended up in hospital for a week. Now, I don't know whether you've ever had the sort of infection that you don't think straight. I wasn't thinking straight. And there were some amazing things that happened in that hospital that week, let me tell you. <laughs> um, but I was on IV antibiotics. I was, had a blood transfusion. After the blood transfusion, I had this amazing epiphany. I was, I'd still like to know the police officer that donated the blood so that I can go and thank him um, because I'm sure it was his life that I was living that next day. Um, but I got well, which was the great bit. But again, really stressful. And I had to leave Daph in the hands of other people for a week and pray and hope that those people were going to take care of her that they were going to take Mr. to the toilet because there was no backyard, so he had to be walked four or five times a day, that they were going to make sure that Daph had all the meds, you know, that the build was still going to continue. Stressful time. But I was well looked after. So finally, on the 7th of April, our house was finished and we moved, which was so good. So good. But then I started radiation a week later. <laughs> and that was three weeks, five days a week. The good bit about radiation, if you've never had it, is the worst bit is the setup, which takes about 45 minutes. You go in for treatment, you literally walk in the room, say, lie down, I listen to two songs that they play music while you're doing it. Two songs later, I'm walking out. And it's great. Not everyone has it quite that easy, but that's generally it. But you've still got to go to the hospital and back every day. So it was good. And by then, things had started to improve with my health. But in amongst that, I lost my mum. So I'd got through about a week and a half, well, about a week of radiation. They rang us and said she's not good. Um, and we all ran down to see her. She lasted another week, but it was tough um, because, you know, she's your mum. And you only have one of those, usually. Um, she was 93, and it was a blessing in some ways, but in other ways it was super hard. Um, she'd had dementia for some time, so I actually picked a photo from her 90th birthday because by the time she was 93, it was pretty rough. Um, and I want to remember her as the woman that God made her. Um, but that was a tough time. 
And in amongst that year, I'd had eight of my friends lose their parents as well. And they weren't just my friends' parents, they were people I knew. I'd grown up with them, I'd had relationship with them. It was a tough year. You now, the Queen talks about her Annus Horribilis. Well, this was possibly equivalent. But God's been good. God's been good. And I got to speak at my mum's funeral. Um, and, you know, I treasure the things that she taught me. I treasure her life in Christ. She was a Christian woman. So I'm not sad because I know where she is. I know where she is. But some of the things that I've learned through this journey, we've got to hang on, you know? Keep talking to God. Keep talking to God, even when you don't think he's listening. I'm a conversational prayer, as I said. So I do tend to just, you know, talk to him on and off through the day. Um, really important, though, that we do talk. And sometimes I've consciously got to go, hang on a minute. Got to take a little bit of time out and talk. I've got to talk to him about the stuff that's in front of me. I had to do that last night. I was there going, okay, I've got home. I've, you know, we'd been dog training in the morning, come home, had a bit of lunch, went and visited someone in the hospital, came back, and then I've got a friend ringing saying, can I come over and stay? I'm not feeling very good and safe. Okay, come over and stay. Got Daff at home and... Dap's brother, Brian, he's without a home at the moment, so he's living in our garage. So I had all of them at home, and I'm going, how the heck am I going to get an hour to do this? Like, not that I did all this in an hour, by the way, please, don't think that. Um, but I just wanted to get it finished off so I could email it to Nathan and it'd be here for today, you know? And I'm going, how the heck? And I was getting all worked up, and I went, hang on, Stephanie, just breathe. And thanks, Johan, and just breathe and talk to God. I got an hour and a half, and I did it. And then I was calm, and I could get on with the rest of the night and do what I needed to do, you know? Um, so just keep talking to him, even when you don't think he's listening. And there are times when I've felt that God doesn't listen. There are times when I have thought he hasn't, but he does. Stay connected. We need others when we don't know how to pray for ourselves. We need others. They'll pray, but also there are answers to prayer. You know, the number of people in this room that I go around and I look around and I go, helped, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you, because you've all been an answer to my prayer. And so prayer is not just about praying. It's also about doing, it's about responding. It's about listening to what God is saying to us in those moments and acting on it. Sometimes I do that better than others. And there are times when I think, I should have, but I didn't. And I'm always a bit sorry about that. So make sure you listen to that voice. But do lean into others when you do struggle. Because others will pray. Celebrate God's goodness. So be thankful when nothing seems to be going right. I was grateful for the food that was provided when I had chemo. I was also super grateful when I had a real craving for honey, soy, chicken. And you know how hard it is to get honey, soy, chicken delivered, particularly during COVID, particularly when the restrictions were back up to where they were. And I'm going online going, Uber eats, Uber <laughs> Anyway, a sport worker said, what do you want for dinner? I said, I really want honey soy chicken. She said, oh, do you have any here? And I went, no. Nah. She said, OK, I'll go down because Daph liked to get out. So they'd go down together and they'd grab some chicken. And you know what? I actually made honey soy chicken for myself. And that was so good. It was so good. Satisfied my craving. <laughs> but it was also great to feel like I could do it for myself. And so, you know... Even though I was feeling pretty rotten with the chemo and stuff, there were still things to be thankful for. And I do remember that honey soy chicken. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> so one rock at a time. 
one rock at a time. I couldn't have done what I did if I tried to do all, pick up all those rocks at once and get through it. No way, no way. I'm flat out getting through one day at a time. Um, in fact, I'm flat out getting through a few minutes at a time some days. So all I can do is what's in front of me. So today I'm speaking because that's what's in front of me. I know when I go home, I've got three young people at home, young adults, adults um, at home waiting for me who will need my time and attention. But this is what I'm doing now. I'll go home and I'll do the next bit and I'll do the next bit and I'll do the next bit. He gives me the strength to do that one thing at a time. Deal with the one rock at a time. Now, are there times in my life where many rocks seem to have hit all at the one time? A hundred percent. And some of you know that better than I do. Some of you know that better than I do. But he gives us the strength to do one at a time. So grab that rock and do it. And sometimes if we're lucky, we might even grab two and be able to do a giant step. <laughs> I like this quote from Nicky Gumbel. It says, life is a set of challenges, problems and hassles. We sometimes imagine that if we could just deal with the immediate challenge that we are facing, that all of our problems would be over. Who's ever felt like that? <laughs> Me. But life is not like that. Life is not like that. Doesn't it just seem like you just get over one thing and something else comes up? So if we resolve one problem, others are just around the corner, guaranteed. The temptation is to see these challenges as preventing us from carrying out the ministry God has given us. But in actual fact, dealing with the problems is the ministry. If I look back over my life, just really quickly, I grew up in a, in a poor multicultural society. I grew up in the western suburbs of Sydney for the first seven years of my life before we moved in two different areas. If I said Bankstown, most of you go, oh my gosh, well, that's where I grew up. Um, so I lived there, then we came up here to Kalanga. Poor, maybe not so multicultural, but people with heaps of need. Our church had a boys' home attached to it, 27 young boys who were without family, were part of our church. I grew up with them. Can you see the picture starting to happen? I then fostered children. I then worked in a multicultural school over here at Woodridge. You know? God uses some of the struggles in our lives to grow and shape us. If we don't have those struggles, how do we reach out to the person next to us who also has struggles? We can't. How do we see God's presence in all this if we don't have struggles? And that's part of our modern society. That's a real problem. We have everything we want, or we think we have everything we want. And we fail to see that God's actually part of that. My house is not there because I built it. My house is there because God blessed us with it. You know? We've got to change our mindset. So, for me, I talked to you at one point about praying about do I live? Do I don't? What, what, what happens? You know, do I just go and be with God? Do I stay here, look after my family? I don't know how to pray. One of the reasons I didn't know is because of this verse. These little troubles are getting us ready for an eternal glory that will make all our troubles seem like nothing. So whilst I'm having problems here and now, the big picture is this isn't going to be the case anymore. We're going to be with God. We're going to be celebrating. We're going to be celebrating with other children of God. And our troubles will be no more. Sometimes we get so worried about praying for healing here on earth, 
when in actual fact the healing that we need is that spiritual healing. The healing that enables us to relate to God. To be part of his kingdom, to be part of that eternal future. So for me, I just want to encourage you today, make sure that that relationship is right. Make sure that God is that centre. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of illness. Don't be afraid of dying. If you know God, it's all under control. And we've got a great future ahead. So your rock is in your hands, in God's hands. Sorry, your rock is in God's hands. The stuff that is hard, and I don't know what your tough stuff is today, but the stuff that is hard for you today is in God's hands. It's in his hands. And you can be assured of that. I just want to finish with this passage from Romans 8, verse 26. And it says, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And as the uh, band come up to play, do our final song, I just want you to have a think about what it is in your life that you can't find words to pray for. Because I'm sure we've all got stuff. Whether it's to be healed or not healed, whether it's do you pray for hope for your family or do you pray for challenges because you know that those challenges are going to make them grow what is it that you need to pray for that you maybe can't find the words and we're going to have a time of prayer after the service where anyone can come forward and have prayer and someone will pray for you and pray into those spaces that you have no words for but be assured that God's Spirit is also praying for you in those spaces. So, what do I know about prayer? Maybe not a lot, but I do know that God loves us and wants to talk to us and is talking to us and he wants us to talk to him. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you that your presence has been here with us this morning. We just thank you that your spirit sits alongside us each and every day. That your spirit prays for us in words that we can't even possibly understand, Lord. But we just thank you for that. And we just thank you for your love for us. Your love that is so great that if we have faith in you, we can have eternal life with you. That the trials and troubles of this world will no longer be because we will be with you in eternity, Lord, and that that place is perfect. Lord, we just thank you for the encouragement that you are to us. We thank you for the gift of your son who took our place, who took all of our sins away, Lord. We just thank you for that. And we just pray that as we finish this time of worship today, that we will reflect on you and you, that we will reflect on our troubles as a gift to enable us to serve you better. We just ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. Why don't you stand with us as we sing? Just remind ourselves again of God's faithfulness. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with your song of deliverance from my enemy. Till all my feet are gone I'm no longer a slave to feed I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to feed 
to a place where God is going to meet with you. Feel free to come down. We've got pastors and council members and others to be able to pray with you. And just share that burden with you. From my mother's womb You have chosen me The called Jesus, I've been born again oh, to your family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm yours. I'm no longer saved to feel. I am a child. God. I no longer say to feel I am a child. 